In the third part we are going to polish the foot animation. Let's get started. Generally the animation process is to first block the character, which we have already done, then go for intermediate poses, which are poses you will add to smooth out a bit and add details to your animation and make it more readable. In the case of a run cycle, I prefer to go directly into splining and start with the foot. So first I will clean up my character by removing everything but the left leg, which is available in the tool panel under the beefy tools. Then I will open the graph editor and switch to curves. With my foot selected here, I can see all the keyframes we have set with the different interpolations. So for the time being, everything is set to auto clumped, meaning that Blender will automatically try to average the curve from one point to the other, which is a, a great tool to make smooth animation. The first thing I want to fix is the position of the foot whenever it touched the ground. So I will have to offset the Z position, which is the 8th position of the foot, to the left, so that it will happen earlier during uh, the animation. So I just select the uh, blue channel, which is the Z channel, the key, and, uh, when, and I will offset it by 2 frames onto the left. Then I will switch it to vector so that it will break um, the curve and make the foot like not uh, slowing down before it touched the ground because this is not possible. I mean, whenever something is falling to the ground, uh, it will uh, go faster and faster and faster until uh, it got an impact on the ground. So this is what we are uh, creating here. And also for the output, I will do the same. I've also set by pressing V and vector the Y curve to a vector while the foot is moving on the ground so that I have a linear interpolation. When you are running at a constant speed and your foot touch the ground, it will have a linear speed while sliding on the ground. So you may have a straight line, not a curve, because the curve uh, means that the speed in time is changing. I always first walk on the 8th of the foot, meaning that I'm walking on the Z location channel, the blue curve here. It's really depending also on uh, the forward motion, so the Y axis. So I play with those both, trying to get a nice curve. When the foot gets back, I want to uh, create a nice wavy shape of the position of the foot. When it comes across the other foot, it should be uh, quite low, uh, nearly touching the ground, then it will raise toward the front, uh, pushing the character forward, and then you have this um, landing, let's say. So you can see that I'm now really modifying the position we had during the blocking because we were missing some uh, position currently. So for example here, I'm forwarding the foot before it touched the ground so that it, it seems to be like further forward. And then what I will do is I duplicate the last uh, frame and move it onto the first because those two frames must be exactly the same. And you see that I have rotated the vectors so that they are aligned as if the curve was continuing in time so that you will have a seamless a cycle. This is very important. By adding a second keyframe and offset it slightly on the right, like this, I will kind of make the, the foot floating in the air. And so we have the, the same thing here on the downward position, where it will stay kind at the same level in time. And you see that I have offset it on the right because I wanted uh, the heel to get closer to the butt, to get a more athletic uh, run. I tweak a bit the y-axis by smoothing the curve to get uh, a more fluid movement. Um, this is something that is pretty hard to explain. You have to 
experiment a bit with the curve and try to understand uh, how they, are, they affect the movement. I will clean up a bit the view by hiding the unused layer and then you will see that from the front view uh, we can see that the left and right motion of the foot is totally off. So I will have to fix this. So it's pretty simple. When the foot is in the passing stage and in the air, it will um, get further away from the body. So when I'm on this very pose, I will uh, slightly offset the foot by increasing the X value. And this very keyframe will be mostly the most extreme position on the very left of the foot. So it means that then uh, the curve should go down, meaning that uh, the foot should recenter on its line. So I will lower this value and then I will rotate this point trying to guess how it should blend uh, with the very beginning. Now I can revise this that I've set to vector by resetting it to vector and um, the vector will automatically get aligned with the previous point. It will point, sorry, to <laughs> the previous point currently. Then I can duplicate um, my uh, very first point and move it uh, onto the end and I should have a smoother uh, movement and a seamless uh, movement. So it's not perfect yet but it looks way better. What I've spotted then is that there was here a slowing down on the z-axis which uh, is wrong. This is what I've told you before. The foot is falling so it may not slow down here. So I will uh, make this value higher so that the foot is higher at this stage before it get to the next frame uh, with a very uh, abrupt curve, a very straight curve toward the ground and it should look more natural. This is the kind of detail that we may not see at first glance or I don't know, sometimes the animation seems okay but uh, really sometimes I'm moving the curve without even uh, watching my animation because uh, just by looking at the curve I know that it's wrong and in this case I don't have like a falling curve so I fixed it and now I can watch my animation and it looks better for sure so now I can walk on the foot roll I will get rid of uh, the Y keyframes in the middle because I haven't used them yet we will use them in the very last part of this tutorial because I forgotten to do it before and my rule of thumb uh, for a 24 frame uh, run cycle is generally that when the foot touch the ground I will make it flat like one or two frames just after the contact and you want to have a very fast slap so you may switch it to vector then I will duplicate this flat keyframe and reset it to vector so that it's linear and the foot is flat on the ground and then I will see if I need to offset it or not and see if the curvature of the foot is fitting what I'm looking for. So I don't have any specific advices here. It's do you feel like it looks natural? Do you think like it should be more uh, extreme, more, I don't know, more, more exaggerated? It really depends on you. But uh, as soon as you have this balancing movement, it should look great. I just speed up a bit the video because now I will just watch it like a few times to see if the curvature is okay and then we can jump to the toe controller. So again I make some cleanup, I get rid of the unused keyframe, the keyframes that are constant and were written during the blocking stage and I will then edit uh, the X rotation curve. So as for the heel rotation, I will from the heel, offset it a little bit, create a vector interpolation so that when the toes hit the ground they are accelerating before the impact and now I'm just looking at the curvature and moving my uh, curve uh, pretty slightly, just trying to make the curve in the graph editor smoother and avoid flat area if the 
output is not or the part you are animating is not supposed to have a constant pose. If it's in movement, the curve should be changing the value. Also here, I like to increase a bit the curvature of the toes just before they touch the ground so that it will make uh, this uh, flapping effect uh, more obvious. Then I duplicate uh, the very first keyframe and move it to the very last and I try to average a bit the curve so that the transition from first to last keyframes is good and we have a seamless movement. So again I will watch and rewatch and rewatch my animation and maybe tweak a little bit some of the, the curves just before I go on to uh, the pull target to correct the knee because we have some popping effects and there are many keyframes. I think we can simplify it. After I've checked out the different poses of the pole target, I figured that it was very messy and I decided to remove everything and just uh, to create a simple poses. So I will just delete those keyframes, watch how the animation is going without any movement of the pole, and then I will add a slight left and right movement, meaning that when the foot is getting outward, uh, the knee should also point outward and just after the contact pose I want the knee to bounce a little bit toward the inside of the leg. So this should be achievable by mainly moving the pole target on the left and the right and playing only when with one or two curves so I believe the X curve should be enough and I do hope so because animating a pole target is pretty hard because it's a point in space that make the knee uh, that directs the knee that give an orientation to the knee and so it's not as intuitive as playing with rotation or stuff like this so I've set the first position where the knee has to point out and when it hits the ground I've lowered the X value so that I have this a little pop on the inside which uh, make it interesting. Now I can align the last and the first point and I won't go that much further because uh, I don't have the label or the feeling that I could make it better by moving the curve. I, I can't feel it so these are my limits let's say. So I will select all the polished bone, the foot, the heel, the toe and the pole, select all the keyframe, press Ctrl C and then I will enable the right side, I will select all those bones, make sure you press Ctrl C while hovering into the graph editor. And now I will remove all the keyframe but the first, so that there is a keyframe written. I will select everything and press Ctrl Shift V and now I should have exactly the same animation on both sides. So Ctrl C to copy, Ctrl Shift V to copy with mirror. Now we do need to offset those so I will select every curves, every point, duplicate them and slide them by 24 frame on the right and then I will select everything and slide them by 12 frame on the left and now I've made an offset of 12 frames. To get rid of the unused keyframe, I will set my cursor to the very first frame and write a keyframe. Then I will move it to the frame 24 and write another keyframe. And then I will select all those keys and set them to free by pressing V and selecting free. It means that uh, those vectors are not affected by what is before and after. They will keep their orientation. When I will remove the other keyframe, they won't be affected and so I will keep my movement nice and clean. In the next part, we'll polish the torso.